Hey guys, Victor here. I've got some really big news. My channel name has changed and I'm going to tell you the reasons why. When I first started my YouTube channel, YouTube would not accept the channel name alltimegreats.blog, which is a website that has my key focus in everything that I do. And so I improvised and just went with All Time Greats RC thinking that that would uh, describe my channel. Well, I hired my daughter. I have five children. Four of them are daughters. And I hired my youngest daughter, who is 16, to be my director of marketing over this summer. And she's going to help me um, get, get my, uh, my branding on all on all platforms. Uh, my, I have a Facebook page, I have a Twitter and Instagram, and a, of course a YouTube channel. So she's going to help me uh, take those platforms to the next level. And what we were discussing was that I should have the same name across all platforms. So my social media side of things was good, but then my YouTube channel was All Time Greats RC, which really was a mismatch. So I went ahead and changed my channel name from All Time Greats RC to All Time Greats Blog. It's four separate words, All Time Greats Blog. So I'm sorry for throwing this curveball at everybody, but it is the reason why I did it is so that we can have uniformity when we're trying to uh, take things to the next level. And so with that, I've got some PSA subs that recently came in and I'd like to show them to you. So let me get this ugly mug out of the way and I'm gonna flip this phone around so we can check them out. All right guys, so here we go. This is the November and December subs. It was a total of 24 cards with 12 tens and 12 nines. What I like to do is I prefer to do small monthly subs, uh, typically about 10 to 20 cards per month and that way I just slow and steady uh, wins the race instead of just I can't afford doing 200 card subs or 500 card subs but I can do 10 20 cards sometimes a little bit more just depending on what the budget's like but uh, I'm gonna start off with 2018 Topps Gallery Glaber Torres and I'm gonna be showing you a run of Glaber Torres 2018 Topps Archive beautiful card there and here's a second one. This one I'm really happy about. I picked this one up at a card show. I want I paid 10 15 dollars for this one at a card show about a year ago and it came back at 10 so I'm really pumped about that one. 2018 Tops Chrome. I picked up a lot of 10 at a card show, at a local card show. And I just bought a lot of them and one of them included a refractor, which was really cool. And a lot of these came back gradable. Uh, I was, I bought like, a, I can't remember, it was like 10 or 15 of these Topps Chrome Glabers. And most of them were like spotless. I just loved it. What I basically do guys, a, a pattern of collecting that I have is Obviously, my primary focus is Hall of Fame rookie cards, and I like to collect it in, in all four of the primary sports, baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. But a secondary focus is rookie cards of future Hall of Famers. And needless to say, current day All-Stars as well. And here's what I like to do. I follow baseball closely, and towards the end of the year, I will determine which of the rookie class has impressed me most and I collect their rookie cards. Now I don't, I'm very cautious of not buying into the hype machine. That player has to impress me throughout the, I watch, I follow baseball closely and I MLB tonight and quick pitch. I don't mean to miss an episode, shout out to quick pitch cause I'm missing them dearly. Uh, this is a baseball family. My wife is just a big a baseball fan as I am. So it's like when we're home, we don't indulge a lot on TV shows. We indulge in MLB Network, and that's basically our channel. So as I watch the baseball season, a player that has impressed me enough to say, you know what, 
They're all good, but there's something about this one guy that to me makes him ahead above the rest. And those are the guys that I pursue. For example, in 2018, it was Soto, Acuna Jr., this guy here, Glaber Torres, obviously, and Walker Bueller. It was a tremendous 2018 rookie class. In 2019, it was Tatis and Alonzo. And those were the only two. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. did not impress me, and I haven't purchased a single one of his cards. Oddly enough, I do not purchase packs or boxes. Now, I know that might come to a surprise to some of you, but very seldom, I should say. You know, if my kids pick up a blaster box at Target for Father's Day or Christmas or something, that's one thing. I'll sit there and I'll open it and, I'll en and I enjoy the heck out of it. But as far as unopened packs coming out of my card funds is very, it doesn't happen. I'll, but I will pick up current day rookies at card shows. I'll pick them up at eBay, on eBay, and I, and I basically shop for lots. So I'll, I'll get this like lot of Glaber Torres I'll thumb through them to see which ones are gradable, and I'll, and that's how I do it. And Com C is another one that I that I that I like to. When I have my eye on a certain guy, I'll pursue it, and that's another avenue that I pursue. And so, with that said, there was another one, and then I'll show you the refractor. Also came back as a ten. Now here's a theory that I have, okay? And let's just use the Sclaber Taurus as, as an example for my theory. Through my experience, I've noticed that perhaps sending too many of the same cards to PSA is a mistake. For example, this 2018 Topps Chrome Glaber, I purchased 10 of them, and I, I wanna say all 10, let's just, for the sake of this example, all 10 are gradable. I think it's a mistake to send PSA a stack of 10, 15, or 20 of the exact same card. Put yourself in the greater shoes. You're going to get tired of looking at the same card over and over repeatedly. And it's happened to me when I'm sitting at home looking at cards to, to, um, to grade. If I'm looking at the same card over and over again, I have a tendency to get bored with this card or, or I begin to get more, I guess, complacent in my, in my searching for them. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think the graders, I think the grades are affected by the way you portray yourself. If you come off as a selfish or greedy I believe it's going to reflect on the grades. There's always that one card that that makes you feel like they're punishing you. It's like if this were to come back a, a, a seven. What in the world did they see wrong with this card? There is no way that this card is a seven. I don't know if you guys ever been through that. I know I have in my years of, of sending in submissions. There's just always that one card that just doesn't make any sense. I feel like, in a sense, the grader's punishing me. He's like, hey man, you're, you're, just, you're just being a little greedy here, and I, I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna flip these and you're gonna sell them, and so for that, here, boom, here's a seven for you. <laughs> now, hear me out. This is just an intuition that I have. I have no facts, I have no evidence. It's just an opinion, and what I love about blogging and what I love about YouTube is that it's a platform where we can share our own personal experiences and we can share our opinions and it's okay and it's just uh, like I said I have no proof of this and my strategy is I'll take those 10 Topps Chrome Glaber Torres and I'll stretch them out over the course of three months so this month I'll send in three and the next submission I'll send two or three. The next submission after that I'll send two or three. And I will, as you'll see here in a moment, I send a nice batch of variety of cards. Anyways, let's let's move on. I sent in uh, a couple of Fernando Tatis. These came back. These are easy to grade, but it's 
It's a rookie card of this young man. Really did impress me. I believe he just has tremendous athleticism. I think he has a big heart as far as ambition. And I like I like his play. He impressed me almost to the much to the point where I think he overdid it, and that's how come he got injured. But his heart, his motivation, his ambition, his athleticism really impressed me. And you will see my next couple of subs. I've picked I sent in a ton for Fernando Tatis Jr. Moving on with the submission, I'm going to switch it to Mr. Fred McGriff. This one has been in my submission box for like years and I just finally got around to sending it in perfectly fine with that beautiful nine. I started a, a Sammy Sosa 90s insert card collection last year and I started to send them in to get graded. And I sent these few in and I said, you know what, I don't think I want my Sosa 90 insert collection to be graded. Um, I just think it's uh, it's hard to find nice copies and it's a it's a secondary collection that I don't think I want graded and I think that's okay. I mean I've got these three. I'm, I'm more than likely going to keep these three or put them in my store, not real sure. But my Sosa collection I've decided to go non-graded. Pick this one up. Beautiful card, lots of shine, as you can see. I don't know if that reflects, yes, yeah, it's, it's reflecting off the light there, but. Beautiful 1999 Topps Ken Griffey Jr. Lords of the Diamond. Lots of shine on this one. This one is really cool. 2001 Ultra, Derek Jeter, Greatest Hits. I've always loved this insert set. I've had this card for years. I may piece together this entire set because I just love the, the greatest hits and they got it looking like, a, like an album or probably more like a DVD. Yeah, that's what that is. Um, a DVD disc. And I just love the design of this card. The entire set is just awesome. There's only 10 cards in the set, all of them heavy hitters. So this will be a set that I will be pursuing for sure. And I got this one, a 2000 Ultimate Victory Derek Jeter. This one is serial numbered 21 to 250. And this one I found strange. PSA decided to put on the, on the label parallel of 250. Now, I don't know, I wish I knew what their thinking was behind doing that. Is that something that they're gonna start doing? Or, or I would love to know what the deal is with this one. But needless to say, I got a 10 on it. Love it. Lots of shine on this one. And that will be going into my store. Switching it over to basketball. Like I says, I, I collect all four sports. I, I'm, I'm a little weak on the hockey side. Uh, I don't have very much at all on hockey. But it's, it's something that I have my sights set on. I will be pursuing Hall of Fame rookie cards of hockey players for sure. 2001 Topps Chrome, Tony Parker, refractor, parallel rookie of a great ball player and loving this card. Next up, 1996 Finest, Ray Allen, refractor, parallel rookie. This one is a little off-centered and that's okay. This one has been, uh, I've had this card for quite some time and I've been meaning to get it sent off and I know he got inducted into the Hall of Fame recently and it just motivated me to finally get this card graded. I was not expecting a 10. I was actually expecting an 8 because of the centering. Uh, but it came back a 9 and I was very excited about it coming back a 9. Lots of beautiful shine on these as you can see card back is pretty nice as well and the centering is a little off on the back as well but that's okay because this is going into the PC another insert set from the 90s that I really liked was this uh, soul of the game insert set 
out of 98 Skybox Premium. Uh, this one, again, this one has been in my PC for a while. Wanted to get it, and I just finally got around to getting it graded. But very like that one a lot. Look at the look at the back of it too. It's pretty cool. Next up, 1998 Ultra Vince Carter Gold Medallion Parallel Rookie. Big fan of Carter. Uh, I thought he was another guy who had just tremendous athleticism. He's still playing. He's I don't know if he's still playing or retired, but he's he was still in the league last year in 2019. Let's just say that. Uh, definite Hall of Famer. I can guarantee you that. His cards have spiked already. Uh, there may be another spike, depending on what he does, and once he gets inducted. Uh, but a great ball player throughout the years. Loved watching him play and what he brought into the slam dunk contest. He was one of the elite dunkers for, for many years. Real excited with this card. I got a couple of Tim Duncan rookies. I am putting together this registry set for Duncan. I want to say he has 18 or 19 rookie cards. And I am putting together the set registry. I believe these two that I'm showing you here is going to make... Uh, I want to say 13 of the 19. When I get them all, I will make a video on uh, Tim Duncan registry rookie cards. Big fan of Duncan. Just a great ambassador of the game for many years. And finishing off the submission is this amazing 1995 Flair Hot Number Shaquille O'Neal in a PSA 10. What can you say? This one is perhaps one of the greatest insert sets of the 90s I I don't think looking at this thing in video does it justice when you look at this thing in person it just literally like mesmerizes you and I just love the colors the design everything about this thing is amazing look at the back of it as well love it so this completes my 24 card PSA return and looking forward to the next one. Well guys, that's going to be it. Thanks for sticking with me this long. Uh, these PSA subs is something I just really, really enjoy. If you get a chance, uh, check out my website, alltimegreats.blog and tell me what you think. Uh, the tagline of my website is your rookie card resource. And in it, the focus is rookie cards of Hall of Famers. I intend on making a video demo for the website and I'll be channeling that video through YouTube here. So stay tuned for that. I appreciate you guys and we'll see you on the next one.